Hey, welcome back to Frank's Model Works. I'm Frank. So can you believe it? It's week four of model cars and coffee. Pretty good. Pretty good. We're keeping it going. This was a great idea by Paul over at Left, Left Coast Model Car Builds. And a lot of people have jumped on and it's a really good thing. It really helps the community, the YouTube community, because if we're producing content then our content will be fed to more people. So the more content we produce, the more that we can spread the word about our hobby. So that's why it's a really good idea. <clears throat> this week I want to talk to you about one of my favorite um, modeling subjects. Although I don't I haven't built many of them, I do collect a lot of them. And that's the station wagon. Uh, the station wagon first began uh, you know in the earliest days of of automotive travel as a means to they called it a station wagon because it conveyed people from their homes or perhaps a hotel or a resort where they were staying to the train station so they could go home um, and it, it evolved into the family vehicle that was the mainstay of the American family pretty much throughout the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, waning off in the 90s, and then were later replaced by modern-day SUVs. I mean, let's face it, most people don't take a Ford Explorer four-wheeling. It's, it's the family station wagon at this point. Um, I grew up with, with station wagons. My parents, um, after after my father abandoned the 1967 GTO, which is a story for another episode, but he abandoned an, a 67 GTO because he he couldn't get it to start for him in the cold. They they got a 1968 Malibu station wagon with a 307 automatic, no air conditioning. It was in Nassau blue metallic with the third row rear facing seat. Uh, that was a great car, but even though it was less than 10 years old when they got it, the hood was already flaking, the, like, the paint was flaking off, and, and the metal underneath was oxidizing. It wasn't really a car that was built to last. And at one point, my father decided he, he wanted to get a, another, a second car, which was weird for people in who lived in an apartment in New York City, because, you know... Two station wagons, it was, it was a bit much, but he got a deal on uh, a 1974 Galaxy 500 station wagon that was, that was used as a pickup car for a funeral home. They used it to pick up the deceased from either a hospital or a, the morgue or wherever, you know, after they'd been cleared by the medical examiner to then bring them back to the funeral home and, and get them ready for their funeral, which was creepy. But um, a funny story about that vehicle, we drove that car, and I mean, that, that car was huge. It was gigantic. We, I, I, I had to like reach across the car to hit my sister. Like I had to like go over, physically go over there to get her. Um, it was a big car, and then behind it, it, it didn't have the rear feast, uh, the, the rear facing seat. It had two seats that folded up along the side of the of the like the fender wells where the wheel wells were, and you could fit two people on each. So you could fit four people in the back. You could probably have played hockey in the back of that thing. I remember we used to go apple picking out in that car, and um. It would be my mother, my father, my two aunts, my two uncles, five cousins, my sister and I. So that's seven kids and six adults in that, and with room to spare. Uh, they drove it for a while. It had a 460 with a C6 transmission. That's like a truck. But, and that thing could get out of its own way in a hurry. My father used to drop the, drop the pedal on that thing. And we'd get right onto the Interboro. But for whatever reason, my father was never a proponent of changing the oil or getting transmission serviced. So he started developing a slip. And he brought it to a... His mechanic was a crook. 
there's just no other. I mean, you know, I'm not going to name the guy. He was a piece of garbage. But um, he brings it to this mechanic all the time who just robbed him every time he brought him there. And the mechanic looks at the transmission. It probably just needed, like, a top-off in the in the the ATF, and, and it would have been fine. Like, this was not... It was in 1974, and this was probably 1984. You're like, you're not really... And it didn't have a lot of mileage. So the guy says, yeah, you need a new transmission, 1300 bucks." So he puts... Uh, my father gives, the, gives him the $1,300, and... They put the new transmission in, allegedly. And it's the weirdest thing. A week later, the car gets stolen. What are the odds that a car with a brand new transmission in it that somebody paid $1,300 for would just somehow just disappear like that? I wonder who was involved. So I brought this up to my father, you know... And he goes, no, he would never do that to me. I'm, I, okay, whatever. So that car disappeared. And then after that, because that in the interim, my parents had, had sold the Malibu, because uh, they they would, so now they were down to no cars. So from that big gigantic Ford Galaxy 500 station wagon, we went to a 1980 Subaru station wagon, which was quite. A reduction in space inside I didn't even have to in order to elbow my sister I, I literally just had to lift my elbow up and she, I'd crack her right in the chin so I, I didn't beat my sister up a lot don't don't you know if she got lippy you know it's just it's what siblings do relax calm down so one day we bring the um, my father brings the Subaru to the crook and he had this this mechanic that, and you know, I'm no one to talk because I'm heavy, but this guy was a manatee, an absolute manatee. He's, he goes, he brings it to the uh, mechanic because the dome light doesn't work. Who cares? It's the dome light. But anyway, this this manatee gets into the front seat of this this uh, Subaru, and, and I'm saying to myself, there's no way. They're going to have to get the jaws of life to get this guy out of this car. And he's leaned back in the in the front seat. In order to change the bulb and the dome light, and all of a sudden, boom! He breaks the, he breaks the uh, what do you call it, the frame of the seat. So now it 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 it's just falling over. So he gets out. He goes, all right, that's eighty bucks. My father goes, you just broke the seat. He goes, no, I didn't. So my father hands up, father pays him the eighty bucks, and we leave. I go, Dad, what's the matter with you? He goes, I don't want any trouble. You want any trouble? Okay. So then from that point on, they, we used a shelf to prop the seat up. So now I couldn't elbow my sister anymore because I'd hit my elbow on the shelf. But anyway, I'm a big fan of model cars that are station wagons. And throughout the years, I collect as many as I can get my hands on. And, you know, there's the ubiquitous ones like the uh, 1966 Chevelle wagon from Ravel. The 1965 Impala from AMT. And over the years, I've, I've picked up this 1949 Mercury wagon. If you want to see a nice built-up version of this car, go over to BG's workshop. Brian's got a really nice... He just released a video a couple of weeks ago. His build-up of that kit, beautiful. Tell him how, much, how beautiful it is because he doesn't think it's beautiful. But I think it's beautiful. You tell BG that it's beautiful also. AMT just re-released... Came out with this, the uh, the Nova station wagon, in a couple of versions. And you could actually build this up pretty nice, put an engine in it. Not bad. But for the most part, oh, oh, there's also this. Pinto. It almost looks more like a sedan delivery. I haven't cracked this open yet, but I have a feeling I could build this as a, as a station wagon. And if not, I'm going to build it as a station wagon anyway. I'll just modify the kit. But for the most part, if you want station wagons in the hobby, you might have to get some some resin or 3D printed. So throughout the years, I've managed to collect a few. And I got the ones out that I could get to very easily. There's a lot of stuff that's buried in the stash and it's hard to get to. But this is a 1964 Impala station wagon. 
The donor kit for this model is the AMT 1964 Impala. Now this is a, this is a nice looking mold, very clean. Doesn't look like it's gonna require a lot of cleanup. The only thing is the badging, if you could see, I don't know if it's gonna focus, but it says Impala SS. And to my knowledge, I don't think there were any SS station wagons, but that would have probably been a good idea. Um, so when I do build this, one day, I am going to probably just take off the SS emblem or replace the entire emblem to, uh, with uh, photo etch. So, but this is a nice looking kit. I got that this from RMR, uh, Resin Model Ranch. Um, then I saw this and I had to get it. The 1969 Plymouth Satellite Station Wagon. This is by um, Greenlight and it's, it's a nice looking little 164th scale, like Hot Wheels scale. I don't know if, the, I don't remember if the Brady, if the Brady family had one of these. I guess they did, but would be nice. I mean, not, tell me that this wouldn't sell like hot take, hot cakes in, in 125th scale. They wouldn't be able to keep these in stock. It would be ridiculous. Then, well, for eBay, there's a seller called Dialex. This is a 1968 Ford Country Squire. This is actually a full kit. Comes with an interior, a chassis. You build it. You could build this 100%. It would be curbside, or you could probably cut the the hood open and put an engine in there. And I, personally, I'd put a Coyote. Because why not? You know. But it's a very nice print. There, are, there are some some uh, of the printing lines in it but they're not that bad and you could probably do a lot of cool stuff with this if you have the time it has the the wood paneling the ubiquitous uh wood paneling that's that's such a a hallmark of station wagons it's molded in so then you could you could do that um with the with the wood on the side really nice looking kit i forget how much it was it was a little spendy and it's coming from the ukraine so it takes a little while to get here Next up, there's Robert Burns over at Too Many Projects. He has a ton, a ton of products. And they're very high quality, beautiful stuff. This is a 1973 Dodge or 74 Dodge Monaco in 3D print. And you see that? That's a buck in order for you to make the, the windows. And, and it's included with the kit to not just the grill the headlights the bumpers and stuff like that but there's bucks in order for you to form the the windows for the kit so it's very useful it's a good thing but last but not least <clears throat> this one is a 1974 ford it's a country squire so it has the it has the the wood paneling on the side and i'll probably build it as the country squire but i am going to uh, the, the the car that my parents had was like dark green. So this is going to be a dark green with the wood panels. So that's my story for this week's installment of Model Cars and Coffee. Now you notice I don't, I, I never drink coffee with because I don't drink coffee. And if I say coffee 11 more times, it's going to be people who's typed down in the comments, C-A-W-F-E-E. -E. So that's why I don't drink coffee. Plus, do, do, do I look like the person who needs more caffeine? No. Once again, as always, I got Frizzo's back. I appreciate your support. And until we speak again, my friends, take care of yourselves and be well.